Elon Musk claims that humans are already cyborgs in a recent tweet. They rely on technology and use it to outsource their memories. Are we already cyborgs? Could artificial intelligence be turning us into de facto cyborgs? To answer that, we must first understand what characteristics define this new species. Join us on this shocking discovery as we explore how artificial intelligence is transforming us into machines. For thousands of years, humans have dominated our planet as the only intelligent, self-aware species. However, with the rise of intelligent machines, everything could change soon, possibly even within our lifetime. Following closely behind, Homo sapiens may ultimately disappear from the face of the Earth. So, what exactly is a cyborg? A cyborg is a blend of cybernetic organism, which refers to a being combining both organic and biomechatronic body parts. Coined in 1960 by Manfred Kleins and Nathan S. Klein, the term describes the integration of technology with organic life forms. This integration can occur through various means. It could be the installation of artificial limbs or organs or the embedding of chips or potential nanobots into the body. As a result of these enhancements, cyborgs experience improved physical or mental capabilities. People often associate cyborgs with wild creatures that blend human and superhuman attributes in a robotic form. Characters from movies like The Terminator, Darth Vader, or the Borgs from Star Trek immediately come to mind. However, you don't need to look that far to see a cyborg-like being. In fact, according to the common definition, a cyborg is an individual who combines organic and mechanical body parts. According to certain definitions, even the most fundamental connections we humans have with technology can already classify us as cyborgs. For instance, a person with an artificial cardiac pacemaker or implantable cardioverter defibrillator would be regarded as a cyborg. These devices measure voltage potentials in the body, process signals, and can administer electrical stimuli. This synthetic feedback mechanism ensures the proper functioning of the individual's cardiovascular system. If you're yet to grasp the picture of what I'm saying, let me introduce you to two real-life cyborgs who illustrate the extent to which humans and machines can coexist within a single person. First is Neil Harbison. With an antenna implanted in his head, he resembles a giant ant guided by a piece of bread on a stick. Harbison is, in fact, an artist who was born with acromatopsia, characterized by extreme color blindness, which restricted his vision to black and white. He later got a specialized electronic eye that looks like an antenna implanted in his head, which enables him to interpret colors as sounds on a musical scale. He now possesses the ability to perceive colors beyond the normal human range. Pretty crazy, right? He can see the sky clearer than you. Harbison has been living as a cyborg for over 10 years already. He made history by being the first person to have an antenna implanted in his skull. Since 2004, he has been recognized as the world's first legally recognized cyborg and cyborg artist by the international media. His antenna serves as a sensory device, sending audible vibrations through his skull to provide him with various types of information. This includes measurements of electromagnetic radiation, phone calls, music, videos, and images, which are converted into audible vibrations. Additionally, his Wi-Fi-enabled antenna allows him to receive signals and data from satellites. Perhaps this is the first example of how our future world will look like, scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube within your own head. What an insane idea! If you are surprised by that, wait until I tell you the next one. It might make you start questioning everyone you meet to make sure they're not cyborgs. In case you're trying to keep something from them, they can sometimes reach your mind. Don't be scared, we're all in this together. Jesse Sullivan is another great example. While employed as an electrical lineman, Sullivan experienced a life-threatening incident in May of 2001, a severe electrocution that resulted in the amputation of both his arms. This extraordinary turn of events, however, led him to become the world's first bionic man. The Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago offered Sullivan the chance to replace his arms with advanced robotic prosthetics, an opportunity he eagerly embraced. 
through a procedure involving nerve muscle grafting, Sullivan was equipped with a bionic limb, meaning he can control his prosthetic limb with his mind. When he wants to lift an arm, he simply thinks about it and certain muscles in his chest contract instead of those in his original arm. The prosthetic replacement interprets this muscle contraction as an instruction to move in a certain way. Additionally, he has the ability to sense the temperature and the amount of pressure applied by his prosthetic grip, just like he still has arms. You might be thinking, but how did we even get here? Let me show you a few examples of animals that were turned into cyborgs by humans. Have you ever heard of a cyborg rat? Yikes! Well, let me take you to the State University of New York, where they achieved a groundbreaking feat in 2002. They implanted tiny electrodes into rats' brains. The line between biology and machinery blurred as these rat cyborgs effortlessly guided robotic arms and conquered mazes that they previously couldn't. Dr. Samantha Roberts, the project's lead researcher, envisioned a future where these cyborgs could revolutionize neuroprosthetics and rehabilitation therapies, offering hope for those in need. Well, I hope these rat cyborgs don't procreate just like their predecessors. Imagine a robot-like plot, but then with rat cyborgs. Sounds like a topic for the future. On to the next one, the cyborg insects, even more gross. In 2009, at the University of California, Berkeley, a crazy fusion of nature and technology took flight. Researchers transformed ordinary beetles into beetle cyborgs by attaching tiny electronic backpacks like a jetpack. With delicate precision, electrodes stimulated the insect's flight muscles, allowing remote control. The prospect of these living drones conducting search and rescue missions or monitoring the environment sparked global fascination. The boundaries between biology and engineering blurred, opening new horizons for bio-inspired robotics. This could be a way of finding your missing dog or cat. Can you imagine? These stories of mind-controlling rats and beetle cyborgs show the relentless pursuit of human curiosity and scientific innovation. Don't you think we're taking it a bit too far? So there are many cyborgs out there, animals and humans. Whether we accept it or not, we are currently living in the cyborg epoch. We are already starting to enhance our bodies with technology. As computer connections to the brain and machines become more sophisticated, the distinction between humans and machines becomes increasingly blurred. The ability to control machines directly with our thoughts has made creating fully functional cyborgs a genuine possibility. But at what point does a human cease to be human? In the near future, how will we differentiate genuine humans from cyborgs? By a certain percentage or by conscious awareness? How will we define humanity in the coming years? I'm really getting tensed up with all this. At this point, I really need some likes and new subscribers to calm down my nerves and get my emotions under control. Could you please smash the subscribe button? Humans have been enhancing their bodies with technology for years. It all began with basic modifications like eyeglasses to aid vision in older individuals and crutches to enhance mobility after a leg injury. However, these advancements were just the beginning. Now, we are capable of developing artificial body parts and connecting them directly to the brain. With further refinement, these advancements will eventually become accessible to a wider range of individuals. What happens when otherwise healthy individuals willingly choose to replace multiple body parts with mechanical ones to gain advantages like super strength, speed, or enhanced vision? At what point do they cease to be human and become a completely different species? While it may seem far-fetched that anyone would willingly undergo such drastic modifications, we've already witnessed a multi-billion dollar industry emerge from the willingness of people to alter their bodies for aesthetic purposes as evidenced by plastic surgery and surgical implants. Considering the added benefits of body augmentation, it seems plausible that more individuals would opt for this path. How many people would be open to altering themselves to attain the capability of a fast functioning memory? Or to possess the strength to lift a car like Superman? In the near future, brain implants to improve our memory will be the new norm. Implanted magnets or RFID chips in our fingers would replace passwords and keys. Additionally, exoskeletons could boost our strength and improve our overall well-being. Almost all aspects of the human experience can be enhanced thanks to artificial intelligence. 
Yes, cyborg technology is the next step in the evolution of humanity. Cheerleaders for a cyborg future, such as Professor Kevin Warwick, identify themselves as transhumanists. The concept of transhumanism revolves around utilizing technology, genetic engineering, life extension science, and synthetic biology to enhance the human condition. The objective is to elevate our intelligence, improve our health, and extend our lifespan beyond what has previously been attainable. Ultimately, transhumanism envisions a transformation of humanity to the point where it becomes post-human. We may not possess superior physical abilities compared to other species, but when it comes to intellectual capacity, we have a certain advantage, explains Warwick. However, we are rapidly approaching a time when machines will possess an intellectual power that we'll have difficulty dealing with. To keep up with these machines, he believes we must enhance our limited organic bodies and brains artificially. If we can't outmatch them, join them, he added. Wow, just Wow! Another prominent advocate for transhumanism is Kurzweil, the acclaimed inventor of the flatbed scanner. He not only believes in the possibility of attaining immortality, but also intends to resurrect the deceased, including his own father. According to Kurzweil, transcending the limitations of our biology is the essence of being human, as it allows us to expand and enhance who we are. I was born human, but I believe it's something we have the power to change, he says. Many other transhumanists also believe that fusing with technology is our only hope of surviving the consequences of this great change. According to Elon Musk, our use of cell phones and computers has essentially turned us into cyborgs. He argues that further integration between humans and technology is necessary, including technological modifications to our brains to make them more computer-like. Musk predicts that as AI advances, humans will need digital technologies to enhance their cognitive abilities to stay relevant. Musk's Neuralink company also aims to enhance humanity by fusing artificial intelligence with our brains technologically. Neuralink recently started its human trial, so very soon we will already see more human cyborgs. Can you hear the young man with the big vision? He's got the audacity to transform us all into cyborgs. I won't be here by then. I might be somewhere else exploring the remains of some giant ship. However, if you will be here then, to avoid being transformed into a cyborg, you better subscribe to this channel. We'll save you. Warning, failure to watch the enlightening video in the top right corner may lead to a cyborg war. Save yourself from extinction by watching it immediately. Resistance is forbidden. Watch it now.